Hello, and welcome back to Discrete Structures. My name is Mirkov, and today we're going to be talking about combinations and permutations. A lot of times you might find yourself having a problem where you need to count a number of different possibilities, such as the number of different possible phone numbers or poker hands. Rather than write every possibility out, there's some shortcuts we can do using mathematics. The most obvious of these are when the things that we're trying to count are independent of each other. For example, the digits in a phone number. On a fictional planet, telephone numbers have nine digits. The first digit could be any value from 0 through 9, and the same thing for the second digit, the third digit, and so on. As a result, we get every possible nine-digit long sequence. We can consider each of these choices to be an independent event and that each choice has 10 possible values. So what we do is we multiply the number of options at each choice together to get our result, which is 10 to the ninth. This is the case any time the choices are independent, such as if you had to choose a day of the week and an hour of the day, your first choice would be seven possibilities, and your second choice would be 24 possibilities. So the answer would simply be 7 times 24 different options. But independent choices are rather boring. Let's move on to dependent choices. These are situations where the choices you make at the beginning affect what options you have later on. There are two categories that we can consider. Permutations, where the order of the choices matters, and combinations, where the order of the choices does not matter. Let's say you had five Harry Potter fans that are going to a party, and they go to a store that has ten costumes. Since each person is going to have a costume, how many different arrangements of the costumes to the people in the costumes can we make? That is, if Alice is dressed up as Harry Potter, that's different than if Bob is dressed up as Harry Potter. So the first choice is relatively straightforward. The first person to choose has ten options. But once the first person has made their choice, the second person only has nine options remaining. The third person has eight, the fourth person has seven, and the fifth person has six. From before, we can see that once we multiply these choices together, we get how many permutations are possible. We can write this more mathematically by saying the permutations when we have n objects that we want to distribute to r individuals is n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. Note that the 5 factorial cancelled out part of the 10 factorial in the above example. But what if the friends don't actually care who is wearing which costume? Well, the first thing that we should do is we should figure out how many different orders of the 5 people are there. 5 different people could be the first person, four different people could be the second person, and then three could be the third person, and then two could be the fourth person, and then there's only one person left who's the last person. This means that there are five factorial different orders of five people. So if we want to know how many different combinations we can have, we simply take the number of permutations and divide it by the number of orderings, which gives us n factorial divided by r factorial multiplied by n minus r factorial. So what if instead of 10 costumes, we were talking about having 52 cards, and we wanted to know how many different 5-card poker hands are there? Since the order doesn't matter in a poker hand, we will use combinations. Here again, we see 52 factorial divided by 5 factorial times 47 factorial, and we cancel out the 47 factorial with part of the 52 factorial to get a little bit of a nicer number here. And that's combinations and permutations. One final note. Once upon a time, there was a guy named Pascal, and he made this here triangle. If you start at the top of the triangle, and you go either left or right, the number will show you how many different ways you could have followed to get to that position. So starting at this one, there's one starting position. We can go left or right, so we will go left, and there's a one. And if we go right, there's a two. And that's because we could have come from left, right, or we could have come from right, left. Each value is represented by a combination, which is often written without the letter C. If here, k represents which number on the horizontal we are at, 
and n represents which row along the vertical we're at, then n choose k represents how many possible ways we could get there from doing a walk from the top of the pyramid. And what this equation says is that n plus 1 choose k is just the sum of the two numbers above it in this triangle. And while that's pretty neat and all, one might ask what the purpose of this triangle is. If you've done algebra, you might have seen something along the lines of x plus 1 times x plus 1, in which case there is 1x squared, there are two x's, and there is 1, uh, just plus 1, at the end. This corresponds to the second row, assuming that the row starts counting at 0. This is not a coincidence, but I'm not going to go into it because it's boring. Okay, practice problem time. How many different orderings can you make using the letters of mattress? Notice that some of the letters are the same, so you don't want to repeat anything that you've already done. Try solving this using the formulas that we've been talking about. 